Hello, my friend, and welcome to Wisdom Trek. I am Bethry Chamberlain, your guide to wisdom and creating a living legacy. Thank you for joining us for our five day per week wisdom and legacy building podcast. Today is day 746 of our trek, and it is Wisdom Wednesday. We continue this Wednesday to explore the trails through a biblical worldview. We have invested the past five Wednesdays plotting out what a biblical worldview is and why it is important as a Christ follower to interpret life through the lenses of a biblical worldview. We are now ready to begin exploring current issues that will impact our world and society and comparing those through the lenses of a biblical worldview. That is, instead of the lenses of society, culture, modern media, and social media. I do not desire to tell you what to think, but teach you how to think so that you may be able to filter current issues and events through your biblical worldview. You may not always agree with my view, and that's okay. I am open to any comments you may have on the subjects that we explore. We are broadcasting from our studios at the Big House in Marietta, Ohio. With the Thanksgiving holiday behind us and Christmas is just before us, many people during this season will at least acknowledge Christ's birth and participate in many Christmas events and, and traditions. It is a good thing to take time to pause and reflect during this time. If it is not driven by a true biblical worldview, it will be short-lived once the season is over. In order to live as a Christ follower all year long, your life must be based on a core set of beliefs that are in line with the precepts of the Bible, which is God's Word. I realize that there have been a lot of misinterpretations, false teachings, perversions of passages, and abuse of the Bible over the centuries, but that is why it is so important to study God's Word for yourself and to learn from a wide spectrum of viewpoints and teachers. This is not an easy habit to establish, but it is a value that is far greater than any of the world's riches. Before we drill down on a particular issue that will influence our lives in our modern society and culture, today we'll explore the six conflicts with a biblical worldview. Christ followers don't have problems with the biblical worldview, right? After all, it is the belief system that they should claim as their own. The truth is, though, a very large percentage of self-identified Christ followers Many who are even active in the church have mixed other beliefs with their Christian faith. Some of those other beliefs are overtly non-biblical, such as the belief that the Bible is not the authoritative revelation of God, or that naturalistic evolution reflects the truth of human origins. Others have mixed their beliefs of a different nature. Many who do self-identify as Christ followers are, in fact, what we could refer to as cultural Christians. That is, they identify as Christians, but not because they believe or live out the teachings of the Bible, but because they were born into a Christian family or a Christian country such as America, or they were baptized or confirmed when they were young. A worldview has to be more than just an intellectual belief. Belief at a worldview level originates in the gut or the unconscious level. Worldview beliefs are such that it is almost impossible to live in a way that is contrary to the tenets of those beliefs. So, even though many people call themselves Christ followers, many of the same people don't see any problem living a lifestyle or believing things which go against biblical teachings. Many will rationalize their lifestyles based on their feelings or the prevalent societal thought instead of the understanding of God's Word. In other words, their actual worldview beliefs are not consistent with biblical beliefs that they claim to hold. These people may be Christ followers in name, but obviously do not have a biblical basis for their worldview beliefs. Worldview beliefs are so foundational that people cannot imagine going against them. If someone declares that they are a Christ follower, but are able to give themselves permissions to believe or act in ways which are contrary to the biblical teachings, then it is a sure thing that there are beliefs mixed in with their worldview level, which come from some other worldview. With this understanding in place, let's look at six areas where many people call themselves Christ followers, but have other beliefs mixed in with the biblical worldview. Conflict number one, theological distortions. As we live life, particularly when we are young, we pick up our beliefs just by living. We are taught our basic beliefs in morality by our parents and other relatives, school teachers, pastors, and friends. Unfortunately, many times there are beliefs that we pick up that are simply not right, even as it regards to the teachings of the Bible. Many times this will stem from observing role models who also have a mixed worldview and do not live completely biblical themselves. It is not unusual at all to find people who have non-biblical beliefs about the importance of church interactions, who is saved and how they are saved, evolution, abortion, homosexuality, sexual morality, and other things. 
it is not sufficient to believe something just because that's the way I was raised or that's the way the pastor taught. We must be diligent to compare what we believe with what the Bible teaches and adjust our beliefs to align completely with biblical teachings. This is a lifelong process which requires that we are willing to evaluate our lives based on the teachings of the Bible on a continual basis regardless of our age. When Jesus was resurrected and ascended into heaven, he did not leave us helpless, as he told his disciples, and which also applies to us, in John chapter 14, verse 26. But when the Father sends the Advocate as my representative, that is, the Holy Spirit, he will teach you in everything and will remind you of everything I have told you. Conflict number two, a lack of understanding of God. The second conflict is rather sneaky. Every person interacts with God based on the beliefs about Him. If one's understanding of God is wrong or incomplete, the personal interaction with Him will be distorted. God has revealed Himself in the Bible as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, but He has also revealed Himself to be our loving Heavenly Father. We must recognize God in both of these capacities. As our great King, we must have a profound respect for Him and acknowledge both the priority of His will and the status of His position. As our Father, we need to recognize that He loves us and is both personal and near. If both of these are not incorporated into our understanding, we will not worship God properly. Once again, our understanding of God must come from the Bible. It is critical to have the humility and be willing to adjust our beliefs about Him as we study the Bible and learn more about the fullness of this personhood. Conflict number three is lifestyle conflicts. Another issue that causes problems with many Christians has its roots in pure selfishness. It is a matter of putting one's own will above the known will of God. Because of our sin nature, we all have the tendency and the desire to be self-governing over every part of our lives. In other words, we want to do what we want to do, no matter what. In many people's lives, this plays out in addictions, illicit and immoral behavior, and other vices. Many self-identify as Christ followers, but are engaging in sexual relationships outside of marriage, both in heterosexual and homosexual variety. Many are also using mind-altering substances simply for personal pleasure. They are living a life as if material resources were their own rather than God's, and they are participating in activities which don't further God's purpose. Most of us can see these flaws in others, but we choose to ignore them in our own lives. God has called us to holiness. We cannot have fellowship with Him when we are deliberately living a lifestyle that puts us outside His precepts and therefore His presence. If we are making lifestyle choices based on non-biblical beliefs, we have somehow allowed beliefs from another place to seep into our lives. The only remedy for this is to know what the Bible teaches about God's will and have the personal commitment to follow His will no matter what. Conflict number four is belief intellectualization. Conflict number four is something that every Christian must be on the outlook for. That is, allowing our beliefs to become impersonal. Since God does not manifest himself to us as a physical being, except through flawed individuals, we don't really have a frame of reference for interacting with him, which corresponds with our usual way of dealing with other persons. As such, many people don't really think God as a person and act toward Him as if He was some kind of impersonal spirit being. Although God is a spirit, He was also a person and has revealed Himself to us as personal and was manifested in Jesus Christ when He dwelt here on earth. As such, we must learn how to personalize our belief about God rather than intellectualize it. This is not an admonition to be anti-intellectual. Obviously, we cannot act on what we do not know. Along with the intellectual understanding of God, we must also have an experiential knowledge of Him. In doing that, we are able to relate to Him as the person that He is. That is, in the same way we relate to others whom we have a personal relationship with. Conflict number five, purpose confusion. Many people, even Christ followers, have their life purpose focused on themselves rather than on God. The truth is, God created us for relationship with Himself and we can only find true meaning for our lives as we understand and tap into that purpose. When we live a life based on self-purpose, God's purpose for our existence gets set aside, and we are unable to live in and to accomplish His will for our lives. But when we live for God's purpose, we are able to walk the path that leads to the ultimate in meaning and joy. Once again, we clarify God's will for our lives 
by growing in our knowledge of His revelation and making that personal commitment that we're going to live in that will above our own. We are created to be bearers of God's image. Those who are not Christ followers should be able to see God through our lives as representatives of Him. And conflict number six, unwillingness to acknowledge God's calling. The sixth conflict that many Christians have with living out a biblical worldview is that they are not willing to acknowledge God's calling on their lives. Many people have the belief that only people God calls into full-time biblical ministry are those who go into Christian vocational professions. That belief does not come from a biblical worldview. God does call some people into vocational biblical ministry, but that is a small subset of a larger group of people that God has called. God has called every believer into full-time biblical ministry. It is just that the ministry most of us are called to is to be done from the platform of a secular rather than a church-related vocation. People who don't acknowledge God's calling on their lives don't see the need to personally do the work for God in this world. Rather, they tend to look to others to do that work, usually the professional vocational minister. No Christian can truly live out a biblical worldview who does not recognize God's calling on his or her life and actively work to accomplish God's purpose through the vocation that they work in. Any Christ follower who struggles in living out a biblical worldview need not look very far to find the problem. The conflict is truly with non-biblical worldview beliefs that have crept into their lives. To solve this problem, there is only one cure. The cure is to recognize where the conflict beliefs are and then remove them from our lives. Most likely, the culprit relates to one or more of the six conflicts above. Solve those conflicts and you will find yourself in a position to live out a biblical worldview in ways that you never imagined possible. Next week for Wisdom Wednesday, we will select another topic and explore it through a biblical worldview. Each week, we will choose hot topics that are prevalent today and explore them through the biblical lenses. If you have any topics that you would like us to cover, please email me at guthrie at wisdom-trek.com. Tomorrow we will continue with our three-minute wisdom nugget that will provide you with a bit of wisdom that, if followed, will allow you to grow healthier, wealthier, and wiser each day. So encourage your friends and family to join us and to come along with us tomorrow for another day of Wisdom Trek, Creating a Legacy. That will finish our trek for today. If you'd like to listen to any of the past 745 treks or read the wisdom journals, they are available at wisdom-trek.com. You can also subscribe to iTunes or Google Play so that each day's truck will be downloaded to you automatically. And thank you so much for allowing me to be your guide, your mentor, but most importantly, I am your friend as I serve you through the Wisdom Truck Podcast and Journal. And as we take this truck of life together, let us always live abundantly, love unconditionally, listen intentionally, learn continuously. Let to others generously lead with integrity and then leave a living legacy each day. I am Guthrie Chamberlain reminding you to keep moving forward, enjoy your journey, and then create a great day every day. See you tomorrow.